Hello my wonderful people of the internet and welcome back to my game collection. So last time we continued with our PlayStation 4 games. We've already got two parts of that out now. So if you haven't seen those, go check them out after this video, before this video, completely up to you. Um, if you want to see what else I've covered in my collection so far. Uh, but yeah, today we are going to keep going with those PlayStation 4 games. Got a whole new pile here to go through. So without further ado, let's kick things off. Okay, kicking things off today, we're starting off with a classic, and that is Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch Remastered. Do you know what? I actually had to get my tongue around saying that. <laughs> no, this is a remaster of the uh, the PS3 game, Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch, which is a phenomenal RPG. Um, I like its art style. I mean, it was kind of by the Studio Ghibli people, so if you know who they are, you know kind of what to expect art style-wise, but oh, good game, beautiful. I don't care what anyone says, Mr. Drippy is freaking adorable. But yeah, you know Cooney, great game. And following up from that, you probably guessed it, but it, it, it's the game's sequel, you know Cooney 2, Revenant Kingdom. I hated that they changed the combat style of this game. That kind of annoyed me. Um, but it has some other fun elements to it, like it has these little world battles that you can do, um, which are really fun, and I really enjoy them. But yeah, another good game. Let me know if you've played it. Next up today, we have a game that Naughty Rage hasn't actually played yet, and that is Secret of Mana. Now, this is actually a remake of a old Super Nintendo game. Um, I never got around to playing it then, because I'm actually not even sure if it was released in my region. That's how little I know about it. And uh, yeah, I thought, you know, I like I like old games. So I thought, and it's a Square game, so you know, it's all good. So I thought, hell, I'll pick this up and I'll give it a go. That was about a month ago. Still haven't got around to playing it. Well, one day. So yeah, let me know what you think, guys. Is it a good game? I've heard it's a good game. So yeah, let me know. Next up today, we have Full Bikini. Now, this is another game that I haven't actually played yet. I know I'm getting really bad at not playing my games. But I don't have the time, okay? I picked this up because it was recommended to me when um, me and Sen sometimes we play co-op games and at the time we were actually playing I think it was Crackdown 3. Anyway um, one of our friends uh, joined the voice chat and said oh you guys look playing games together because we played uh, Crackdown 3 then we started playing Divinity 2, we played uh, A Way Out together and they were like oh do you know what you guys would really enjoy For the King. And it was free from Epic, I think, at one point, and I think we both had it. We never got around to playing it. And I thought, you know what, I like owning games digitally. So just on the off chance that I like that when eventually me and Ten hopefully play it, we do have to finish Divinity Original Sin 2 first. We just haven't picked it up for about two months. Um, I got this just, just on the off chance that I do enjoy the game. If I don't enjoy it when we play it, I'll probably get rid of it. But again, let me know your thoughts. Next up is another game that was actually released on the PlayStation 3 first, and that is South Park The Stick of Truth. Now, I started watching South Park way before I should have started watching South Park. Like, I was very young when I started. So I have a lot of nostalgia for South Park, and I still love South Park. So when they originally said that they were making this kind of game, like a, an RPG of South Park, based like an episode of the show, I was like, oh my god, sign me up, I'm in love. And yeah, I played the game originally on the PS3. I actually did a playthrough on the channel at one point. Um, we did it through, like, I think it was over two live streams. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. Great game. And now the PS4 version wasn't that readily available, but I'll actually quickly skip over to the next game, which is, of course, South Park The Fractured Butthole. Um, and in this, when it was released, it came with a digital copy of South Park The Stick of Truth. And I thought, okay, that's cool, I can now play it on the PS4. Anyway, they decided to release a physical version, so I got it. Because they, they look pretty together. Second one, it's decent, but it, I don't think it's as good as the first one. But hey, maybe that's just my opinion. Next up is another franchise that I've only actually really got into recently. I played one of the games in the franchise a long time ago. Um, 
But the first one here is DMC Devil May Cry. I may as well show you the next one as well, which is of course Devil May Cry 5. Now, I haven't actually played these yet. I, I think we're going to be hearing that more and more at the moment. Mainly because I'm currently playing through the original Devil May Cry's first. I finished Devil May Cry 1, uh, I finished Devil May Cry 2, and I've started playing Devil May Cry 3. And then I'm going to play 4 and then work my way to playing these two. Um, so yeah, I'm quite excited to play these. I have seen a lot of Devil May Cry 5 because uh, Sen streamed it not too long ago. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to dive into these. And golly, golly, because I know you're watching. I know you've played this. Let me know your thoughts. So, next up we have Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> now, a lot of people I know who enjoy Mass Effect say bad things about Mass Effect Andromeda. And in all honesty, yes, I agree it's not as good as the original Mass Effect trilogy. But, you know what, it still has some good qualities as a game. Now... There was one thing that really bugged me about this game, and that was the camera positioning behind your character. I don't know why, it bugged me. It just felt like you, you didn't have a good field of view because your character was just too close to the camera. Maybe that's me being nitty gritty picky, but hey, who knows? Mass Effect Andromeda. Next up, we have a game that needs no instruction. In fact, I'm gonna say nothing about this game. I'm just gonna show you what this game is because it has been re-released probably 10 million times. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but you know, it's been released, re-released a lot. And it's a game that you will probably spend hundreds and hundreds of hours upon. In fact, what I want you guys to do is pause the video right now, go down to the comment section and tell me what you think the game is. And I can bet probably at least 75% of you will know exactly what I'm talking about without me even showing you this game. Okay, I'm just going to flash it on screen for a moment. I'm not going to talk about it. There we go. <laughs> Easy peasy. I'll be interested to see if you're right in the comments. <laughs> Next up, we have uh, Adventure Time, Pirates of the Enchiridion. Now, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, I enjoyed Adventure Time. I liked it. It's got probably one of the catchiest theme tunes in the world. And I heard they were making a turn-based RPG based on Adventure Time. And I was like, ooh. Like, I looked at it for ages when it was full price. And I was like, I want to play it. But you know when you just look at a trailer for a game where you're like, I'm not really sure. So, so what happened was eventually I got it digitally. And it was really cheap. Like, I'm talking years after it came out. Um, I ended up getting it digitally for like... I think it was like five pound or something when it was on sale on the PlayStation Store and I played through it and you know what it's actually a pretty fun RPG it's very on the easier side of turn-based RPGs and it's a shorter story I mean you can probably finish this in about eight hours and that's probably being generous you can actually platinum the game probably in about ten hours um, but yeah fun game and I highly recommend it now, the next game is another one that I have never played. In fact, I just picked this up very recently. No more than like a day ago. And I have never heard of this game before. I only picked it up because occasionally I see a game and I'm like, okay, that could be interesting, but I've never heard of it. And if I've never heard of it, um, I pick it up on the off chance that it might be something that I want to play later just in case values start going up, which tends to be something that does happen with more obscure games. Um, but yeah, let me know if you've heard of this one. It's called Beast Quest. Um, apparently it's based on a series of novels, um, as the leaflet inside does suggest. See, continue the epic adventure with epic Beast Quest books. But I don't know, I've never heard of it. I've never heard of Beast Quest. Let me know if you have. And one more game today. <laughs> now this game I actually had a blast with um, I actually played it co-op with my son um, and it was a lot of fun and yeah that's Untitled Goose Game like oh my god Untitled Goose Game is brilliant it's very short um, it's entertaining though and I think playing it in co-op so really it should be Untitled Goose Game as the game does call it in co-op oh, it's beautiful just 
basically going around and getting in trouble. And one of the cool things about the physical version, let me just pull these out here. Like it comes with like lots of things inside it. Like uh, it's got like a little catalog for like all of the in-game items um, that you can steal. And it just, I'm not doing a very good at showing it. But yeah, like it shows you everything and has like market prices of how much they would cost. Which is pretty cool. And guys, because it's a British village, it's in pounds. If anyone's got like an American version of this game, I'd be curious to see if it's still in pounds. Um, you get a No Goose Allowed sticker. And last but not least, and this is pretty cool, let me just... You literally like get a, a map of the town and it's pretty cool. Like I like that, I like that. It's just a quaint English village. But yeah, it's very, very nice. Um, so yeah, Untitled Goose Game was surprising. It's like I remember when it first came out, a, a lot of people really hyped it up and I was like, no, it can't be that good. I was pleasantly surprised to be wrong. But yeah, that is it for today, guys. Um, <laughs> I can't believe we're still going to have to do another part on PlayStation 4 games. I think there's probably going to be another two parts at the very least. Unless they end up buying more games. <laughs> Rip my wallet. Um, so yeah, I will leave it there for today. Thank you very much for watching as usual folks. And of course, take care and bye.